Good morning, everyone. It's good to see you. Roberta, today is your husband Matt's sixth yurt site. Sending you comfort, blessing his memory. Thank you for sharing him with us in this way. We're all together, friends, carrying all the things that we do. It's among the most <coughs> excuse me, important ways that we show up for each other, to know that we have each other. And so I hope that you all are taking care of yourselves. Today is a complicated day. Not only is today the 1099th broadcast, not only is today the 291st day since October 7th, Today is also Shiva Sarbatamuz, the seventh day of seventeenth day of the Hebrew month of Tammuz, carries enormous significance. It's a minor fast day, but it is a very very big moment in the Jewish calendar. It's the seventeenth day of the Hebrew month of Tammuz, and it begins what we call the three weeks, the three weeks that lead up to Tisha B'Av, among the saddest days on the Jewish calendar. It stood alone as the saddest day on the Jewish calendar until Yom HaShoah was added, and I dare say that October 7th is going to be counted as one of the days that ranks uh, as saddest for its own very, very significant and for us obvious reasons. We are living through um, historic times in, in this ritual way. On the 17th day of the month of Tammuz, this is what tradition says happened. Number one, Moshe wrote broke the tablets when he saw B'nai Israel worshipping a golden calf on this day. During the siege of Jerusalem by the Babylonians, we were forced to stop offering sacrifices, according to tradition. Uh, a, a foreigner, an, uh, an invader, burned a Torah. The idol was placed, an idol was placed in the Beit HaMikdash. And tradition says that in 69 CE, just before the temple was destroyed in 70 CE, the walls of Jerusalem were breached. Um, and so these are very, very sad days. This is a sad period of time. Some people don't shave between now and Tisha B'Av, three months, uh, three, three weeks. Um, some people don't do laundry and so they um, wouldn't buy something new. There are a lot of ways. Not everyone observes this tradition, but the fast, if you do observe it, begins in the morning and then <clears throat> and ends in the evening. You're allowed to wake up early and eat before dawn. Um, there are different prayers that are said, but it is sad. It is sad. And in terms of what makes today, um, this year's Shiva Sarvatamuz especially poignant, is that it does, in the largest way, this is the most commonly um, discussed aspect of what it marks. It talks about the breaching of the walls of our holy place. And I've been dreading this day just because of what it evokes in our lived experience. 291 days, terrorists breached our walls um, with bulldozers and with weapons. And that's how October 7th began. It was the failure of, of our defense forces, the failure of our government in Israel. And it's a very, very intense thing to live through the ritual um, commemoration of an ancient version of what that represented. Now, of course, we are in a different situation. It's not the same. It's not healthy nor historically accurate to conflate two times. In fact, it's one of the reasons that Yom HaShoah, Holocaust Memorial Day, was not placed within Tisha B'Av. No two sadnesses are the same. But it is true that trauma triggers trauma. And so I see myself just at the moment, and I'm sharing this with a community that shares what's going on inside. So this is what's going on inside for me. I'm standing right now in my imagination on Kibbutz Kfar Aza in the south of Israel where I went with uh, elected officials from Westchester just um, two months after October 7th. I stood there with, um, with precious people. I, I won't describe all of it because 
um, you don't need to be inflicted with um, the sensory things that really do trigger certain kinds of memory. But I am standing with all of you as well. So as I describe what I see in my imagination, I'm not trying to bring you there with me. But what I am trying to do is say that the ancient rituals that we commemorate on this day on Shiva Sarbatamuz, they are ways of keeping history alive so that we can learn from it, so that we can grieve healthily and so that we can learn. And so as I walk through Kibbutz Kfar Asa, which is right next to Kibbutz Be'iri, Arlene is sharing her memory of standing there too. I walk through and I see what the terrorists did. I see the markings on the buildings. Now, that's, I'm going to use my left hand to signify my recent, our recent history. On my right, I'm standing in Jerusalem in 69 CE, surrounded by the Roman army, and the battering rams are hitting the walls. Now, I don't always live with these two immediate experiences, but the reason why we have days like Shiva Sarba Tammuz, the 17th day of Tammuz, this, uh, not a holiday, it's the wrong way to describe it, this fast day, this day of grief, of ritualized mourning, is because that history is meant to be transmitted. We're, we're supposed to remember that it happened and learn from it. And what we found on October 7th is that that model of breaching the walls as an attempt by an enemy to dehumanize and to attack, that lives, that lives on not just in our memory, in our ravaged consciousness, and not just in a ritualized calendar, but also it lives in the intentions of some. It's very hard to come to terms with the fact that this was real, by which I mean both. It's very hard to understand how anyone could intend to do what the terrorists intended to do and did on October 7th. But we do our ancestors a disservice if we deny that there are some who carry evil in their hearts. We do a disservice to our descendants if we say there are only others with evil in their hearts. But we are students of our ancestors. And so here we are, traveling through time. And Barbara, I'm grateful that we travel together in this way. I'm standing, here we are again, at Kibbutz Kfar Aza, walking through the worst of the wreckage, seeing and smelling what happened. And right at the edge, there's a row of buildings. I turn to my right. And there, just yards away, is the fence of the kibbutz. And there's a massive hole in the fence. And I know that that is where they breached the walls. Shiva Sarbatamuz, these three weeks that we are now beginning together, is about seeing what a breach in those walls represents. And people would make connections that don't belong. People will say, well, that's why borders matter, and that's why. These were not people seeking a better life, trying to get away from terror. These were people who were carrying terror with them. And we're reeling. We are reeling 291 days since. Because not only did they breach the walls and assault us and massacre so many of us, they also stole us away. The founding of the State of Israel in 1948 was meant to be the end of that kind of story. The end of 
exile, which is another word for Jewish vulnerability. Because we've learned through our history what it is to be vigilant. Now it happens to be, speaking very personally, that I was raised in a bubble of history. People my age really, certainly North Americans, feel that way. I, I didn't believe any of this could be true again. And I know that that's true beyond age and geography. But I remember hearing stories, certainly the ancient ones, and filing them away. That's how it was. But now we are strong. Now we are proud. That couldn't happen again. Well, part of what I believed has turned out to be true. We are strong. And we are proud. But it is clear, friends, that the second part of what I believed, this couldn't happen again. That's a beautiful, sweet thought. And not true. I shared time yesterday with UJA colleagues at the Columbia Barnard Hillel, the craft center um, right off of Columbia campus where Jewish students uh, gather to learn, to grow, and to love, and to eat, and to sing. Turns out also to cry. I heard from students, some of the student leaders who've been the most vocal in opposition to terrible trauma and hatred that they've experienced on campus. And it makes me so, well, proud about how UJA shows up for our students and for the Hillel professionals. It makes me so proud of the Hillel professionals. It makes me so proud of the students. And it also tells me that without a cultivated consciousness, a recognition that we need to protect ourselves. Without that consciousness, we ignore the lessons of history. Today is Shiva Sar Tammuz, the 17th day of Tammuz. This is a day where the Romans breached our walls in 69 CE. But if we created a list throughout time, starting in 586 BCE, in terms of recorded history, we can go into the Tanakh, the Bible, for stories that are not you know, not in the same realm of recorded history, but in the realm of mythic history. And then when we continue, since 69 CE, and then the destruction of the temple in 70 CE, and then, and then, and then, we have learned the necessity, not just of returning to our ancient roots and reclaiming our ancestral homeland, which we have, but also what it is to keep safe. No one should have to wear such a necklace. This makes no sense. It makes no sense. The world should not be like this. I remember my first visit to Israel after October 7th was October 29th. And UJA's uh, Jerusalem campus our Jerusalem Arts Campus, which was transformed to a cheder milchama, to a, a situation room. And I remember so clearly that someone handed me this necklace. And, and no one had these necklaces. It was one of the first batch that came out. I mean, I can see how tarnished it's become. And I hesitated how... How can this be real? How can I wear this so close to my heart? Well, for about 291 days, I've been wearing it. We've been wearing it. I, I remember as I was leaving Israel, which was so hard to do, um, I remember being um, uh, going through customs, and the customs officer looked at my necklace and said, what, what is that? Because no one had these yet. And in a certain sense, the lessons of Shiva Sarvatamuz have become clear again to the Jewish people. Tragically. But it would be inauthentic on a day like today, reverberating through thousands of years a real history, to not point to the sadness of this. 
we have made a really concerted effort, all of us, not just at UJA, but communities all around the world, to come to terms with a world where Shivasar Batamus is recognized as a current tragedy. Now again, it would be a crime against our ancestors to forget that. And it would be a crime against our descendants to presume that that's all there is in the world. We can't, we can't live like that. But we must recognize that a breach in the walls of our beloved homeland cannot happen again. We're going to have to do everything that our ancestors had to do and more to protect our future, to protect our present. It is still October 7th in some very, very painful ways. On Shivas Arbitamus, the past is speaking, at least to me. And the language that Sharon just wrote, which of course is not Shivas Arbitamus language, nor did it begin on October 7th, the language of never again. Boy, do we mean it. Boy, must we mean it. For the sake of students on North American campuses, for the sake of grieving families in Israel, for the sake of families waiting for their loved ones. On a day like today, Shiva Sarba Tammuz, the 17th day of Tammuz, where tablets broke and walls were breached, and sanctity invaded, we are called to remember. And so what I ask us to do, friends, is face this history honestly and with heart, to know that on a day like today, we carry our people and our history within us. It's, you know, theoretically, a minor fast day. Nothing minor about this lesson. My beloved friend Alex Weinberg is here on, on Instagram. He just returned from Israel. He stood witness, and he also carried me as he went and learned. He went and explored. He showed solidarity. He faced it. All of us, and I know I'm speaking early to you, I saw Kim is here. Many of us have returned to Israel since October 7th. And yes, today is a day where we acknowledge the broken heart of our people. But if you have been to Israel since October 7th, you have also seen a willingness, a resilience, a power, a ferocity that is new again in our people's heart. We have rebuilt our home. And we are so strong. We will fight. We will protect. And in order for us to do it as the descendants of our ancestors, we are. And so that we can be good ancestors to those to come. We are going to remember. We're going to make sure that on days like today, we actively remember. We allow the tears. There's a lot to be proud of the extraordinary heroism of our sisters and brothers in Israel, the textured community in Israel of Israeli Jews and Israeli Arabs, the current moment of hopefully, finally, integrating some of the Haredi Jewish community into the defense and the building and sustenance of the modern state of Israel. All of this must be fueled with a recognition that history lives within us. You know, it's not just history's eyes are on us. History lives in us. It's in our bones. It's in our blood. Those walls that were breached, those are the walls of our heart. And we are called to rebuild. We are called to heal. Friends, I hope, I hope, that you feel 
the wind at your back, strength, determination, to be whole, to be present. Give yourself the space to feel the sadness of today. Grief is a healthy, healthy emotion. And there's little control over it, actually. It comes, and then it goes, and then it comes, and then it goes. The Jewish calendar is among the most brilliant things ever constructed because there are days that are set aside for this kind of emotionality. Today is one of them. So I would bless you, friends. I would bless you, and I'd bless me. But most of all, I bless our people. Because just as Rose is pointing to the prophet Yirmiyahu, Jeremiah, who said, channeling God's own spirit, Vishavu vanim livulam, that our children will come home. May the exile end. May our exile, even with the glory of having created the third Jewish commonwealth, may the exile end. May our children and our grandparents and our neighbors come home. May the leaders of the state of Israel hear these calls. Pay attention to all the hostages' families. May we amplify this with everything we've got until all of our children are home. All of our grandparents are home. We should never have to wear such a thing. But until they're all home, we will. Nobody should have to carry these kinds of memories, but we do, and we have for thousands of years. We are the people that remembers, and we are the people that heals. And we are a people that grows. May we continue being authentic descendants. May we be worthy ancestors. May they come home today. Friends, send your hearts with me to the East. Let's sing. Kolon Balevav Penima Nefesh Yehudi Homia Ulefate Mizrach Kadima Ayin Letzion Sophia Od Lo Avda Tikvatenu Ha Tikvabat Shnot Alpayim Liot Am Chofshi Beyatzenu Eretz Zion Virushalayim Liot Am Chofshi Beyatzenu Eretz Zion Virushalayim. Bring them home now. Am Yisrael Chai. See you tomorrow, friends. Take care.